Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tim. As always, great job. Thank you, Suzanne, and Jody, and Tammy for leading us in worship. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Mike and Suzanne, for all you do. In Jesus' name, and everybody out there on uh, the internet, praise the Lord. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Appreciate you uh, joining us in service today and being a part of what God is doing in all of our lives and yes. in this nation and around the world. Praise yes. God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So Sally's not here this morning, and that's because she's at home with five little kids. Praise God. <laughs> They've been with us since Thursday. I almost came yesterday. <laughs> 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 uh, they're great kids, but uh, there's five of them. We haven't had that many in our house since, I think, 1983 or something. <laughs> anyway, it's been a while, but uh, it's interesting. Praise God. <laughs> But anyway, God is good, and yes. uh, one more grandchild, just keep on keeping on, praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Good, amen. Appreciate all the testimonies and uh, sharing this morning. Praise, praise God. God is on the move, hallelujah, yes. and uh, he's moving through us, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. That's what's exciting about these last days. The dumber it gets, the stupider, that's not a word, but I'm going to use it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because it is so stupid, yes. some of the yes. things that we're seeing and hearing and, yes. and so forth. I was yes. just, just reading uh, here, and, and I almost, you know, it's almost like you feel guilty to read it. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm, I'm not trying to de dehumanize people. I'm not trying to embarrass or shame or talk down to anybody. I don't care what the issue is. But listen. I mean, we, we've all got, we're all being touched by situations and circumstances and, and how people's lives are unfolding. And, you know, all of us have a relative or somebody, maybe more than one, who is involved in the homosexuality yeah. and lesbianism and yeah. you know, all that stuff. In fact, I saw the person in charge of the health yeah. is a, yeah. what, was a transvestite, but now is a sex change woman. Now it's a woman that was a man. Yes. I mean, I, I, okay, so they did it, and I don't understand it, and I don't get it, and I can't make sense out of any of that stuff. I'm not trying to humiliate anybody. Right. I'm not trying to talk down to anybody, but let me just tell you what the Word of God says, yes. and we need to keep our yes. focus yes. on this, because they're coming into our schools and yes. teaching our children and trying to get our children and our grandchildren to buy into something that's just yes. absolutely not true. Right. And, and screwing up lives in the process. Right. So, in Romans chapter 1, it says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Yes. We're not ever going to experience the wrath of God. I'm not worried about when the rapture takes place. If it's pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip. I believe it's pre-trip simply because he tells us we're not going to suffer the wrath right. of God. And if God's right. wrath is poured out on the world, right. we can't be here when it happens. Right. Right. No. So however that plays out, that's not my, my real purpose. But because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. It's in every human being. Eternity is put in everybody. Yes, it is. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. If that isn't speaking to this generation and to this time that we're living in right now, amen, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. In other words, saying God really isn't involved in any of this. And we know as much as God does, we can make decisions without bothering to enter, uh, uh, enter uh, into a, a relationship with God or to have God speak into these situations because we know more than God does. So we're not even going to get him involved in this. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. In other words, bringing God down to man's level, to the flesh yeah. level. Amen. Yeah. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, 
to be dishonored through their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them all up unto vile affections, for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Praise the Lord. Believing the lie. Yeah. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things and disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah. that is the word of God. Amen. And you can hate me for it. You can point your finger at me. You can try to have a, the church shut down and everything else because we don't want to go along with this, because we won't buy into right. it, because we won't endorse it. Right. I'm not against the people. Right. I'm not against the That's person right. who's struggling right. with these issues. Right. But I am still saying if it's wrong, if it was wrong for God to say it, 2,000 years ago, it's still wrong today yes. because he hasn't changed. Yes. Yes. And somewhere, somehow, we've got to stand up and love the individuals yes. but hate the yes. thing that the enemy is doing in their lives. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, if I've seemed a little excited this morning, it's because I am. I'm, I'm just sick of seeing the devil use people yes. and then have those yes. people try to tell us that they're doing it for our good. Yeah. That they know something we don't know. No. That they have insights and intelligence and IQ and wisdom and so forth that is just perfectly described here as idiocy yeah. and stupidity and rebellion against God. Amen. Right. So Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to get mad at people. No. I'm going to get mad at the devil. Yes. And I'm going to throw this right yes. back in his face yes. and let him know that we're not stupid. And we're not just going along with this simply because a political group or right. something cultural uh, group of people want this to be their reality. Right, right. They want it to be their reality, fine, but you're not forcing no, it on me or right. mine. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Okay, calm down now. Don't send me any hate mail because I don't care. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. I, I have the Lord on my side. Yes, yes we do. We can yes. argue about anything. How, how long is a minute? Well, it depends on which side of the bathroom door you're standing on. Yes. <laughs> that is the truth. Amen. <laughs> These masks. You know why I hate wearing masks? They have no face stuff. <laughs> I told Mike and Suzanne last Sunday at church, we were talking here for a while. I said, you know, did you know that the devil's going bald? I had some insight. Yeah. And there's going to be a hell of a day. <laughs> what do you call an unpredictable camera? A loose cannon. <laughs> I guess they still make those. I don't yes, know. Yes, yeah, yes. So I think so. Uh, this uh, weather's warming up, so I, yeah. I bought a pair of sneakers from a drug dealer. So, <laughs> I don't know what he laced them with, but I've been tripping every day. <laughs> Try to be a little uh, 
briefer today than last week. Uh, just to pay back to people who didn't show up today that had to set through that long service last week. Pretty <laughs> kind of, kind of uh, you know, Sally told me if I wasn't home, uh, she might not be there when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> the kids so would be. running down the street pulling her hair out. <laughs> Praise God. I'm just kidding. We're, we love our grandkids. Five of them there for four or five days at a time. Yeah. It's all good. Now. Mm -hmm. If I look a little older, it's only because I haven't slept. <laughs> yes, it's a thing. Bobo is a poo poo. <laughs> so God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the yes. majesty on high. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 41 and we'll read verses 21 through 24. Isaiah 41, verses 21 through 24. Praise the Lord. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth, and show us what shall happen. Let them show the form of These are all the wise people here that want to tell us everything that's going to happen, how they're going to make it happen, and all this stuff, right? Let them bring forth, and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that you are God's. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Praise the Lord. God has placed signs in this word, in this Bible, and is for our journey to eternity. Yes. To let us know that we're on the right track. Right? How else are we going to know? Because you can't trust the government to tell you. Exactly. You can't trust some unbeliever right. to tell you where. Or, we've got to have right. the Word of God. Amen. Right. And He's given those things to keep us on the path that right. He has designated yes. for us. Yes. Amen? And one way to tell if you're on the right track prophetically is to find it in the Old Testament types. Amen? And the, and the shadows of the Old Testament is the only way that you can then be able to follow it into the New Testament and see it fulfilled in its reality, in the truth, and not just in the type or not just in the shadow. So in Isaiah 41, what we just read, God challenges the idols. And to paraphrase what God said, he, what he's saying here is, if you're really God's, then take the things that are now, and through those things, show us what the end of what the whole matter will be. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to do this, and then everything's going to be fun. Well, tell me, how's it going to end up? Yeah. Tell me, show me something beyond just a, your guess, you know, what yeah. you want to happen. Show me what's going to happen, and then I'll know you, you know something. You, you really have something to share. Sure. But if you can't tell me what the outcome's going to be, then you're no better than me as a crapshoot. Amen? We're just going to roll the dice and hope something good happens. Good luck with that. Show us the future through present events. Show us the end from the beginning. And God's the one that issued this challenge. That's the way he reveals future events over and over in the scripture. Yes. Just by what's happening right this minute. Yes. And then he tells us what the outcome is. He foreshadows things that are to come by things that have already happened. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's why we read the Old Testament. Yeah. So that when we come to the New Testament, we can see the fulfillment of everything God was talking about thousands of years earlier. Yeah. It's where we get the idea that history has a way of repeating itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. At the time, the present natural event was only a seed of confirmation of a greater fulfillment that was to come. Yes. Exactly. Praise the Lord. So the present and the present
this natural moment in the reality of what we call natural life, physical life, the flesh, amen, there was an event that takes place. And that event really was, it wasn't that it didn't happen, it's just that it was, it happened, but it had a greater purpose than just for yes. the physical, mm -hmm. natural yes. thing that took place. Mm -hmm. yes. It happened as a seed yes. that would then confirm a greater fulfillment that would take place yes. years later. Yes. Yes. That's, the, that's really the old, yes. old, old, old Testament. That's what it all is. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. So look at, let's look at Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, excuse me, 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Praise the Lord. God has declared the end from the beginning. Amen. Psalms 19. Verses 1 through 5. The people are, are, are disturbed, and rightfully so, with all the situations and circumstances between the COVID and the government, uh, the political yeah. environment, and, and all the other craziness that's going on. The weather has been kind of bizarre here lately. All of that stuff. And it's all, God, we get concerned about it because we're so focused on the natural yeah. that we forget that God is.
read question that we can argue about it, but he tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it is so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Isaiah 30 and verse 26. So on the fourth day, God put the light up there, right? He hung the, the, the sun and the stars and the moon. Praise the Lord. We're talking a day is a thousand years, and a thousand yeah. years is a day would have been the fourth day of the four thousandth year that God is talking about here. Mm -hmm. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light God saw that it was good, all right? Isaiah 30, verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall now, this is still prophesied. This is all, even, even though that was a reality on the fourth day, it was also prophetically speaking of the 4,000th year. Yes. Amen? He's always talking to the end from the beginning, yes. right? It's all done. So moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. That's us. Yes. Now, he says, the day, the time is coming, the fourth day, or the, in the 4,000th year, that's going to be the fullest of time that Jesus will show up. But to make that a reality for you, there's coming a time, too, when the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. We, what does the moon? It reflects. That's what we do. And that's where we're at today. Yes. We're now here to reflect the light of the sun, S-O-N. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. And the sun will be sevenfold as light of seven days. Remember, the scripture says the darker it gets, the brighter the light. Yes. Amen? From the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. Yes. So I said this a few weeks ago. Jesus, the son of righteousness, amen, rules today. Amen. He's really here on earth. Yes. How does he do it? Reflecting his light to the world, to yes. us, the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. We, we, we talk about the scriptures all the time. We talk about uh, all things are under his feet, and yet, but yet not all things are under his feet. We go, well, wait a minute. Let's make some sense out of this. Either it is or it isn't. Yeah. All things. He's already done everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now we got to do some stuff. We've got to reflect him in this last day. It's still him doing it, but he's doing it through us. Yes. Yeah. Amen? The moon reflects the sun, just like Christians reflect Jesus Christ. Yes. We're coming to a place where it's no yes. longer, you're not going to just be able to be religious and get anything yeah. accomplished. Right. Yes. Because we're coming to a place where there is going to be a, a really finely defined yes. what's good and what's evil, yes. and whoever is determining what is good and what is evil is going to... Gonna, it's going to have an impact. Right. And if it's our government that's telling us what's good and what's evil, right. we got a problem. Because yes. we're coming into this thing yes. with a bad yes. start, right? right? It needs to be us yes. that are determining what is good yes. and what is evil. He said in the last days yes. it's going to be crazy. The whole world is going to look like they're going to be screaming what's right is wrong, yes. or what's wrong is now right. right. What, so everything's upside down. Yep. I said I saw horse, uh, princes uh, uh, leading servants right. on horseback. Yes. In other words, the people who are supposed to be ruling and defining what is right and what is wrong yes. are the ones who are being servants yes, to the servants, to yes. the ones you don't even know. Yes. 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 And we're seeing that all the time, more and more yes. every day. Amen? And so look, look at Malachi chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. And I'm just, leading, I'm just trying to lead us up to where, where we really are. But he says, But any he that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the salt. And you will tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. And the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. That's the day we're living in, church. These are the days. Amen. We've been made new creatures, new creations, amen, in Christ, to rule and restrain the darkness on the earth, yes. 
by reflecting the light of Jesus Christ inside. Praise the Lord. And the more we do it, the more we're going to piss people off who are not on board. Sorry for the French, but I'm just saying, that's where we're at. We are. It's not, no longer going to just be able to, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm religious and I like anxiety and so I'm going to go along and vote for all your stupidity and, yeah. and agree with it and all this. No. no. There comes a time where you have to draw a line and say, that's it. That's as far as I'm going. Yes. I can still love you, but I'm not getting on the bandwagon. No. I'm not playing that game. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, verse 24. Praise God. We're saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope? All right? Now look at Ephesians 2 and 8. We're saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope? For by grace are you saved, through faith. That, not of yourselves, is the gift of God. So which is it? In Romans 8, Paul is referring to the blessed hope, amen, that saves us from the wrath to come. Yes. Amen. Yep. This isn't about being born again. That's we're saved by faith, mm-hmm. by grace, through faith. Yes. But we're saved from the wrath of God. The hope that we're saved, that we're depending on, is to save us from the wrath of God, or the punishment, amen, that Jesus received for everybody who receives Jesus. But those who don't receive, there's still wrath to come. There's still hell to pay. Yes. Amen. They're they're not paying it now because we're still under grace. Right. Once the church leaves, that's over. Now we're back to judgment. People got to come to God based on their knowledge of Him. Right. Amen. See, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to sidetrack you a little bit, just because it's been on my mind. You know, people say, well, I don't know, the rapture. Jesus never said anything about the rapture. Well, he said very little about the rapture, and the reason he did is because he was preaching to the Jews. That, he said, we come for the Jew first. When he sent his disciples out, he said, don't go to the Gentiles, go to the Jews, to the house of uh, 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 David, you're, you're supposed to be dealing with the Jews first and give them the opportunity. Well, why did he talk about the rapture? Because none of them did. Very few came to Jesus. Jews, I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. The majority were Gentiles. Mm-hmm. And we know that he turned from the Jews to the Gentiles and turned back to them. But they're, for the most part, they're not involved in the rapture because they haven't ever received Jesus. They haven't accepted Jesus. So Jesus didn't talk about the rapture a lot because most of the time he was speaking to Jewish people. Mm-hmm. Hebrews. Amen? So, he's talking to us that we are saved from the wrath to come. Our hope, our invested emotions should be in the salvation of the wrath that is to fall on this earth, on this world. Amen? At some point. Praise the Lord. But we're saved by grace. Through faith, we become one with Jesus in that sense. But we still got to operate in this world. So he's telling us, you're saved. It's already done. That part's done. But you've got to deal with the wrath to come, the concern, the fear, the anxiety about all that. And that comes from a hope of God not allowing us to suffer his wrath. Because Jesus already suffered his wrath on our behalf. Amen. There's no more wrath to be poured out on us. So look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. For God has not appointed us wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. See? So you look at the context that it's written in Romans 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, excuse me, uh, verse 22 through 25 again. Romans 8, 22 through 25. I mean, you know, we are one with Jesus. We're inseparable. Yeah. We're the same as Jesus yes. as far as God is concerned. Yes. Amen. When he sees us, he sees Jesus. Yes. Yep. So for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, who are born again. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. 
But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Praise the Lord. What is he talking about? Are we saved or aren't we saved? Yes, we're saved. But have we seen the manifestation of salvation in this earth to the fullness of what God has declared it to be? That's where we're at right now. We're going to heaven. We're, as far as God's concerned, we're already there. But there's a job to be done here. Yes. That's why we are still here. Yes. And that's why there takes a maturity. There, take, there comes a time yes. where we have to grow up into yes. the full yes. stature of Jesus Christ in order to fulfill yes. these last days, in order for God yes. to be God in these last days. Yes. So let's go. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. And I'm going to show you where we are and what God has already declared us to be. He speaks to the end from the beginning. Yes. yes. So we come to Revelation and think it's the end. No, it's not the end. It's not the end. It's just a reflection of everything that went before. Yes. It's a fulfillment of all of those scriptures that talk about Jesus that are all prophesying of the coming of Jesus. And so we come to the book of Revelation. And what is the book of Revelation? It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. That revelation has to be in us. Yes. Not just our knowledge of it, but that, that it is revealed through us. Yes. Yep. Praise the Lord. So after this, I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is talking to us right here in the fourth chapter of Revelation. He's talking to us right now, today. Yes. Praise the Lord. He is. After this, after what? After we overcome all of our religious BS. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because if you read the, the chapters before, it's all the church of the latest in the church. And it's just a, a, a composite of the church right. with all of its religious right. flaws and, and mm -hmm. hiccups and all the rest of the stuff. So, the Re Revelation, the book of Revelation, it had relevance to the early church. If it didn't, John wouldn't have written it. There was a reason for this to bring together everything that had gone before. Amen? Jesus is speaking through John and telling us, the church, here are the things you need to change your mind about if you're going to move into this total new covenant mentality. Right. To the reality of it. Not just a, a, a religious teaching of it, right. but experientially right. living it. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. So look at Matthew chapter 9 now, verses 16 and 17. Matthew 9, 16 and 17. Here's where the, a lot of the churches are. I've, I've, I've received some uh, invitations to uh, Lutheran Church and another, I can't remember what the other one was, Presbyterian, I think it was, uh, for prayer and, and different things. And uh, I haven't because of scheduling and so forth. But there, are, there is a, a, a move to bring the church together. But sadly, a lot of that is still confused about how we're doing it. What, what it is we're trying to bring together, right? Mm -hmm. No man put a piece of new cloth into an old, onto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Anybody that's ever sewn, you know, patches on, take, take a new piece of material and sew it onto an old pair of jeans, what happens? You wash the old part of the jean that already shrunk, so it's, it's already at its point where it's not going to be changed anymore, but that new piece of garment uh, material has it. So it shrinks and it pulls, pulls away from the other. It just looks stupid. So anyway, take, take up from the garment and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. Else the bottles would break and the wine run about and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles and both are preserved. Amen? Now, he's talking about the times that we're living in. But I don't think that means you can't sing charismatic songs in a Presbyterian church. That's not what he's trying to, that's not what he's trying to say. The new covenant isn't a patch on the old covenant. Amen. The new covenant isn't a hot up old covenant <clears throat> with extra bells and whistles. No. And that's what's happened in religion. Even when they try to, de to get away from it, what do they do? They just drag it along with them and just yeah. put a little makeup on it and fix this and change this a little bit or have a different way of doing this and thinking that, okay, here we are. We've arrived into yeah. the new covenant. Yeah. It's not G Jesus plus the law. 
It's a brand new covenant. Yes. Totally separate. Yes. And here we are 2,000 years later, and the church is still carrying the baggage yep. of an old covenant and hasn't fully come to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yep. Right. We're still doing stuff. Right. Amen. And trying to say we're going to get it right eventually. Yeah. Not until you get a revelation that Jesus Christ has finished this and it's yes. all done. Now it's just a question of us yes. operating out of that reality. Yes. From that truth. Jesus is presently reigning on planet Earth. Yes. And we have to press into this kingdom reality. Yes. Because it's through us he reigns. Yes. That he rules. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Ephesians 2, 6 and 7. And have raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're there. We're here and we're there. Just as he's there and, and here. We're in him. He's in us. Yes. Amen. So that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now one translation says it like this. He will make known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now word church comes from the word that literally means to be called out. We are the called out ones. Yes. yes. What are we called out of? Out of darkness. Yes. And into his light. Yes. The old covenant is shadow. The new covenant is the reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We're no longer just called out. We've been brought in yes. to a promised land called Jesus Christ. Yes. Talking about the shadows and the reality. We're living in a house we didn't build. We're living in a house man didn't create, but God created. We're eating from the vineyards that we didn't plant. We need to shift our thinking from a coming out mentality to a going in mentality. Yes. This is the beginning of a people who are no longer in the wilderness. Amen. Have crossed over. Amen. Yes. People who will harvest the vine of the earth. Yes. yes. Trust in our sickle and see the greatest harvest history has ever seen. Yes. That's where we're at, church. Yes. Praise God. It doesn't end in doom and gloom and despair. It ends with a manifestation of the kingdom of God. Because he has to reign until every enemy yep. is put under his feet. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yep. The last enemy is dead. Yep. And it'll be destroyed. Yep. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47 through 58. First Corinthians 15, 47 through 58. That's one of those scriptures where he has to reign until every enemy is under his feet, although all the enemies are already under his feet. Well, he's defeated them. Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. He's already declared that again from the beginning. But it's going to happen here now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Through us, mm -hmm. his body. There's never been a time when that that reality has been more, more truthful or more needful that we are the body of Christ, that we are a reflection. Right. It's everything that was being said here this morning. Yes. we gotta, we got to start doing it. We got to quit talking about yes. it. We got to quit talking about it like it was a historic thing right. that took place in the book of Acts right. and start understanding this is about today. Yes. These are the days yes. that God intended for his enemies to be put under his foot. Yep. Yes. Amen. Yes. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And faith in God's word. Yeah. Amen. See and say. Writing and doing. Mm -hmm. Speaking and acting. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is yes. exactly what Suzanne was talking yes. about. Everything yes. that was being said here this morning. This is exactly yes. what God's saying. Yep. It's time. Yes. yes. Amen. It's time to do something to get off the pot. Yes. Amen. Right? That's, right. That's where we're at. I, I'm not trying to be gross. You know, I'm just trying to be gen genuine. I'm just trying yeah. to be real. You know, I'm not trying to fool anybody. I'm just saying, 
It, this isn't about my perfection. No. It's about the perfection of Jesus Christ yes. and my willingness to receive yes. and operate yes. in. Yes. Because there's people out there, yes. that you're going to have to talk to them through religious ways. Yeah. You're going to have to talk to them the way they talk. Yeah. You're going to have yes. to reach yeah. them on the level that they're at. Yes. Amen. And if, and if you're too paranoid, like Tim was talking about, if we're too worried about what, whether we look this right or look, act this right or talk this right, we're not going to get anything accomplished except yeah. continue to talk to each other. Right. I don't need I don't need anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I need to release them. Yes. I need to let some yes. stuff go. Yes. And that's the only way you get more of God. That is yes. true. It's by giving it away, right? True. So the first man is of the earth, earthy. Second man is of the Lord from heaven. So initially we're born here in the flesh. But our what is identified here is that first man, earthy, mm -hmm. fleshy, natural, right? But the second man is the Lord from heaven. That's us. Yes. Right? As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So, yes, I, I have been fleshly. Yes. And I can still be fleshly. Yeah. I can act just like anybody else. And do just like, sometimes I do. Amen? But I'm also the second man. Yes. It's a question of which way do I want to operate? Right. Where am I putting my focus? Is my focus on the heavenly man? Amen? The Jesus that's in me? Or is it on the fleshly man that I look at in the mirror? Yeah. Well, it gets easier and easier to look to Jesus instead yeah. of that guy in the mirror. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I don't really recognize him all that much anymore. Praise yeah. the Lord. I, I have to say, I look in there and I go, who is that? Where did he come from? <laughs> But I'm just saying, we're, we're at a time where we need to start seeing ourselves as God sees us. Yes. Yes. And live from that perspective and from yes. that reality. Amen? So neither the corruption. So now, yes. as, as we have been born the image of the earthy, we do, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Yes. As surely as we yes. have lived as human beings in the natural, we as born again yes. believers are going to live yes. as the heavenly. Yes. He's declared this. He said it. It's going to happen. Some generation is going to do this. Yes, you'll be flesh. You'll be born into a natural body. You'll live your life in a physical way. But you're also going to live a spiritual life that's going to have influence and impact just the same yes. as Jesus did, yes. only magnified by the numbers. Yes. yes. Amen. <laughs> Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We can't. We want the kingdom to come. But the kingdom isn't coming to flesh and blood. It's coming to the spirit. Yes. It's coming to the spirit man. Yes. Amen. So we have to receive. To get into the kingdom of God, you've got to operate by the spirit. Yeah. Yes. For the kingdom to be manifest. Yes. It's here just like Jesus is here all the time. Yes. But he's only manifest when we manifest him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Now, I understand we're talking about here, there's rapture stuff going on here, but he's also talking about putting your flesh to death. He's also, you know what I'm saying, not religiously speaking, but saying, okay, I know what he's thinking, I know what he's afraid of, I know what he's freaking out about, but that's not me. I have this image yes. that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. I have power. I can do all things yes. in Christ who strengthens me. Nothing spares me. Right. Amen. So when this, this corruptible, this flesh, shall have put on incorruption, yes. spirit, Amen. This mortal shall have put on immortality. We have already passed from death to life. Well, there's no more dying for us. Our spirit, if we start to identify with who and what we really are, we well, forget about dying. Exactly. That thing that's going to die isn't me anyhow. Exactly. It's, it's not relevant. But what's relevant is the fact that I'm going to live forever. I'm, going, I'm already in that zone. I'm already yes. in that place. Yes. Amen. This mortal will have put on immortality. Then shall he be propped to then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. For the flesh is overcome by the Spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, great, where is thy victory? See, death loses its point yes. when you realize it's not even real. Yes. Where's the victory? It's 
state of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. So religion is perpetuating this fear of God, this fear of wrath, this fear of, you know, what's going to happen? You know, we got to, we got to, you know, all of a sudden, we're going to, oh, you know, somebody's gay, we don't want to. Praise the Lord. We're going to love them just yeah. like Jesus loved them. Yeah. But we're not going to endorse no. and embrace right. what we know to be wrong. Good. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yeah. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Amen. Praise God. Psalms 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Jesus is seated right there at the right hand of God, all power. He's on the throne. What's he waiting for? He's waiting for us to make his enemies. talked about this last week. We need to enter into a new level of intimacy to embrace the Lord and love. See, well, we've missed something. I don't know. But in the mercy seat, we become one. Yeah. That's how we have boldness to come to the throne of God. Right. In the mercy seat, there's no division. There's no separation between me and Jesus. This is more than theology. This is, is. This is relationship. Is. This is reality. Yes. yes. Psalms 92 and verse 10. My horn shall thou exalt. This is David speaking what God's doing in his life. But it's speaking to us. Right? David's the type of Christ we are. So he says, My horn will God exalt. Like the horn of a unicorn. I will be anointed with fresh oil. We are being anointed with fresh oil, please. Now, fresh is the Hebrew word for green. So, he's going to give you a new anointing. It's the anointing of life, rest, and peace. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's intimacy yes. that will bring full restoration. Full peace to our soul, right. to our emotions, to our thoughts, to our intents. Look at Psalms 92, again, verses 11 through 15. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. My ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Praise the Lord. To show that the Lord is upright. That's why he's doing this. He's my rock. There's no unrighteous listening. Can we hear, and I've been hearing it for a long time, new anointing. Time there's a revival somewhere or some outpouring or whatever, there's some new anointing. But I'm not talking about a repackage. I'm not talking about a redo of some old thing with a new flair or a new person doing it. Amen. We're seated with Him. Yes. We are seated with Him. This ministry that flows from the throne and out of the kingdom of God is going to be a people who are full of eyes. People who have a vision for every realm. Yes. Eyes before and eyes behind. Yes. We can see what God has done yes. and we can see what God's doing. Yes. And we can see it right here. Yes. Praise the Lord. We can see with Him and we can see with God. Mm -hmm. We can see the flesh but we can also see the Spirit. 
you see what you can separate the natural from the supernatural. I can separate the fallen made, the human made, from the spiritually perfect. side of the cross, and we can see the life side of the cross. Mm -hmm. Much of religion is only looking at the dead side. Yeah. We get to see both sides. Praise the Lord. Yes. So let's not call a repackaged thing a new thing or a new anointing. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25. And I'll show you what I mean. Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the faith, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us go on there with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without waver. He is faithful. Yes. That promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see today approaching. This is again what Suzanne was talking about, the, the prayer meetings, the, the times we come together. I understand the, the issues, and I'm not judging anybody for not being here because of COVID or whatever other issues they may have. Some are working today, some have other things that are, that are going on. Some are distanced, uh, you know, by miles and geography. Uh, so I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying, if you get together with other believers, you need to be doing it because you're not going to get any reinforcement about the word of God from this government or from any government for that matter. Whatever it is, it's going to be skewed to fit their political agendas. Amen? And so not for saying the assembly of ourselves together as a man of some, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another, and so much the more as we see this day approaching. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God, you see, the thing is, God only did one new thing. He said over and over, what you're seeing and the end is from the beginning. And I, I called it from the end. I called the, the end from the beginning. Yeah. I've spoken to the destiny, your destiny before you ever even existed. You were in Christ yes. before the foundation of the world. Yes. Before there was any human being, you were already in God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. God only did one new thing. That one new thing that he did is the new covenant. Yes. Amen. It's the new cloth. It's, it's the new wine in the new wineskin. Right. Amen. It's the new song of Psalms. Look at, look at Psalms uh, 149, verses 1 and 2. Again, it's all through the Bible. It's just everywhere. And it's all saying the same thing. Yeah. And we are in this time. Yes. We we. We are the Esthers of our day. Yes. For this purpose yes. were we put here. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. For a day such as this. Mm -hmm. Praise you, Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him. Look at this. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Now that's not talking about Israel. It's not, it's not talking about Judaism. Amen. Because the new song that flows from Zion. Zion. Yeah. Not the old covenant. Not Mount Zion. Uh, right. or excuse me, not Mount Sinai. Yeah. But Mount Zion yes. is where this song, where this yes. joy, where this faith, where this confidence yes. is coming from. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Praise the Lord. We, we have to come to Mount Sinai. Amen. To the God who says, stay away. Yeah. Don't come near. You'll die. Yeah. Right. We've come to Mount Zion. Where, yes. where God says, come boldly yes. to the throne of grace. Yes. Come. I embrace you. Yes. I will not allow yes. wrath to fall on you. Yes. I will protect you and bless you. Lord. Yes. Psalms 149, verses 3 through 9. Praise God. 149, 3 through 9. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the temple of the heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. 
Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hand. Yes. We should be shaking and freaking out. We ought to be dancing and singing and shouting yes. with a weapon in our hand. Yes. Amen. For anybody who wants to fight about it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. To execute vengeance upon the heathen yeah. and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their yes. nobles with fetters of iron. Yes. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. And we're not talking about physical battles here in case I get calls from the FBI or somebody else. We're talking about spiritual warfare here yes. that will overcome any physical yes. thing that this world can throw at us. Yes. Government or otherwise. Right. Praise the Lord. We, are, we should be not freaked out. We should be excited about the potential of, of, of the battle that's ahead. Amen. And the victory that will come as a result. Yes. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 5, uh, verses 9 and 10. And again, remember this stuff is all pointing about a now time, a, yes. a, a present moment. This is all just off in the future somewhere. Right. They sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, I'm not talking about the millennial reign or for eternity after. I'm talking about today, right now, is what God is talking about. We keep pushing everything off to the future somewhere so that we're not responsible and we don't feel any obligation exactly. to do what it is God put us here to do. Amen. We will rule and reign with him. Yes. And he will grant us to sit with him in his throne. That's where you're ruling from. You're there. He has declared us already there. We are seated with him in yes. heavenly places. Yes. Together we rule and reign in life. And we see people stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Yes. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 4 verse 3. This will be the last scripture. Revelation 4 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Remember Noah? God poured out his wrath on an evil world. He spared Noah and his family because they were righteous. They, were, they weren't perfect people. They weren't really good people. They were just people who hadn't been influenced or affected by the ungodly, by the demonic forces of the fallen angels and so forth, which had interbred and produced offspring. Praise the Lord. So he says, the flood comes and it washes away all of the sin. Takes care of all of those who had turned to Satan rather than to God. And after his judgment was poured out, what happens? There's a rainbow. Amen? And here we have a rainbow about the throne. What was the rainbow for? Just tell the people, I'll never do this. To you, it'll never happen. Right. Amen. So there's a rainbow here that's round about the throne, and it's likened to an emerald. And he's told us he'll never be angry with us again. Right. You'll never suffer the wrath of God. You'll never experience judgment. That's what he's telling us with this rainbow, right. where we are seated with him in heavenly places. And he said, "That's all over for you. Yes. It'll never happen to you. You'll never experience it." Amen. Jesus Christ took. Every bit of the wrath of God that was meant for us. All of the judgment fell on him. This day that we're living in, the message that we should be hearing, the message we should be repeating, is the message of good news. Yes. Because it's the message of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God that ultimately breaks in pieces and subdues every other kingdom. All of them. Mindset of David and others who ran 
to the back. Yes. Not fear. And not because he thought, I'm so powerful, but I've seen what God has done in the past. Why, why did God do it in the past? So that you would be prepared yes. for what's coming in the future. So you could do what you need to do when the time comes. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's where we're at. And we do it simply by taking advantage of the opportunities that God gives. We don't have to go out, knock on doors. I'm not saying you can't or you shouldn't. I'm just saying we don't have to do that. We don't have to go out, hand out facts all over. God is directing our steps. We yes. are his body. Yes. And he'll lead us to yes. the people that we can have the greatest influence on, the yes. people that we can affect the most, yes. the people that are like us. Yep. Now, you may not be like me. You may not talk to them the way I do. Mm -hmm. But that's because they wouldn't listen to me, right. but they will listen to you. Mm -hmm. right. And the ones that I talk to that will listen to me probably wouldn't listen to you. Yep. Right? There's something unique about us that right. makes us possible for us to reach every single person, yes, amen, that is hungry for God, that is yes. crying out for answers, that's looking for a direction for their life, that's looking to see, is this true or isn't this true? Is it all right to get on board with all of this stuff, or should we, should we just at some point say, whoa, what does God have to say about this? Let's just go through. We're going to love you, whether you ever come to Jesus or not, right. but we don't have to submit to you right. if you're not going to submit to Jesus. Right. Amen? Look at, look at, when Tim talked about it, right. Daniel and Lion's Den. Yeah. What was the difference? The only difference was Daniel said, okay, I respect your position, but I'm not bound to it. Yeah. Not when it's wrong. As long as it's okay, as long as it's right, I'm with you. I'll, I'll, I'll back you up. But don't try to get me to do something that I know is absolutely against God, that's right. anti-Christ, because I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And either God will take me, right. or he'll leave me. And you'll see his power operate through you. Yes. Either way, you're going to see that we don't bow our knee to any name right. but the name of Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what this world needs. It needs more than a cliche. Yes. It needs more than just some adage. It needs to see the reality of Christians living their lives right. the way they're supposed to. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the power of his might. That's true. Glory to God. Yes. So let's, get, let's just be happy and get bold. Take advantage of the opportunities. Yep. Like I said, you'll have them. You'll just stand in the line at Walmart or, you know, yes. Target or grocery store, somewhere, you know. Or, or you'll just be having a conversation and something will come up. Yep. Somebody will bring up. Somebody will be around you that will all of a sudden want to ask a question about Jesus. That never had, never really ever wanted to talk about him at all before. But all of a sudden now, yep. there's something stirring in there. Yep. And God's going to say, I got the answer. I know what you need to say. Maybe it's just a big hug and say, you know what? You have no idea how much God loves you. Right. You have no idea. He does not want to bring harm to you in any way, shape, or form. Right. He wants to deliver you from the wrath to come. Right. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. And I mean, from, in my case, I, I talked to people. I just talked to a buddy of mine I was in the Marine Corps with 50 years ago, over 50 years ago now. Text me every once in a while. And when I told him I was a preacher, because we hadn't seen him since the early 70s when we were, you know, doing a lot of stuff out in Colorado and around the country, partying and drinking and joking and all that stuff. So it goes all there. And he asked me, so what did you, what, 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 what did you end up doing? I said, well, I became a preacher and so oh my God. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. And he told me this, because we were hitchhiking through Colorado, got caught in a horrible snowstorm, seriously. And uh, Colorado Springs, we're headed to Aspen. So we're hitchhiking this, I mean, it is snow, crazy snow. And uh, this chick pulls up, and she's tattooed, I mean, this is 1972 or three or something. And she's got tattooed. And she picks us up, takes us to her place. And we talked about Jesus. She talked about Jesus. And I'm sure she'll rough with Jack, you know. Mm -hmm. But talking about Jesus. And he's so the first thing that God says after all these years, he said, uh, you know, I'm not surprised, I guess. He said after that Jesus uh, cushion biker chick picked us up, gave us shelter from the storm. Mm -hmm. He said that the very next day we got a ride to Boulder, and uh, there was a, a guy and his wife and this little kid, and I don't know, I told the story before, the kid was just going, he's in 
Lexi had gotten stuff all over and there were vegetables on the bags and I had to eat cheeseburgers and stuff all over the place. So when they stopped to pick us up, I opened the door and I saw this. And I was, I've always been a little bit. <laughs> so I let Dodge get in. And he, I, did, I said to him afterwards, like, so we, the guy preached to us all the way to the board. And uh, that was another kind of a moment. And uh, I, God said, I, I, God, he said, I'm not surprised because that, you know, Jesus talking like the chicken gave us the shoulder from the storm. And I said, no, I said, that really wasn't my epiphany. I said, and in fact, the, the, the couple that took us to, that gave us the ride to Boulder uh, really wasn't an epiphany either. Although, I said, I can remember saying thank you, Jesus, when you had sat next to that kid. When we got the <laughs> so, uh, anyway. I'm just saying, God knows. Yeah. And he, he puts people in our paths that we think, well, that was them. You know, it's all poetry out to you. I pray for him every day now, for him and his wife. That they'll be saved, that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That they will believe in their hearts. Amen? That he is their Lord. Yes. Believe that God raised you, him from the dead. And confess with their mouth yes. that Jesus Christ is their Lord and yes. Savior. I believe it will happen, just like I pray for my grandchildren, great grandchildren, yeah. and all that will come after them. Yeah. Yes. Cousins, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews. We need to be here. This is, this is who we are. We have influence. Yes. yes. We just don't realize it because we're so wrapped up in the flesh and in the natural things that are going on. We have the ability to yes. change the future yes. in terms of yes. what they're predicting it to be. Yes, we do. We'll change it to what God has already declared yes. it to be. And we'll Glory. do that by faith. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's just, let's just be who yeah. we are and let Jesus be who he is. Amen. 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 You're dismissed. God bless you. Have a great week. Hit the sunscreen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.